Vadakam, Namaste, and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Vairavi Balasubramaniam, PhD, the Sky Creator. And I'm at a place right now that I didn't think I was going to be in. Um, this is uh, the Faculty of Literature at University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, 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 it's surprising. It is surprising that I'm back here after so long um, because it's about 19, eight, yeah, 19 years ago I was here as a student mentor and starting my work as a lecturer doing social service and so on and so forth and I just can't believe I'm back here. <laughs> now the reason I'm here is, uh, is something that I'm very happy about. My brother gave uh, his first talk at an at a international convention or the convention made up of international associations and uh, he was uh, presenting his work on Reiki and um, his interpretation of um, emotional absence as an indicator of certain types of diseases and so on and so forth. And there are many other practitioners that are also speaking at this event. It just boggles my mind that it had to be this faculty. And I just remember myself 19 years ago, you know, managing students, speaking to large crowds and so on and so forth. So it's really just rather surreal for me to be here. But uh, yeah, having said that, I mean, I'm just still taking it in, obviously. Let's get to what you probably want to hear about, which is the Pisces full moon. Now, the Pisces full moon has just gone exact. And as with all Pisces full moons, the message is, as always, relax. That's the first thing you need to do. There's a lot that can be coming out, whether it's through your past lives, whether it's through your dreamscapes, whether it's through your, you know, deep, deep, deep karmic patterns, whatever it is, it's likely to be coming to the surface now and it's asking you to meet it, eye to eye, face to face. None of that works out well if you go into a situation panicking or stressed out or whatever, because when it comes to spiritual work, no matter how intense it seems, it's got to come from a place of calmness within. And that's why people go to facilitators when they feel they can't hold that space for themselves. Because when you're in a situation, it becomes that much harder to be detached from it. You know, it doesn't really go together that well for most people. Some manage, but most don't. But effectively, this is a time where with that space of calmness within, we are being asked to allow, to allow a larger field of consciousness to move through us to be clear in our intentions that we wish to connect to this larger movement of spirit as it is aligned with love, compassion, universal truth, call it whatever you want. We are basically needing to create a space where we allow that divine energy to come through. Now tools can help us do this because remember the Virgo sun opposes the Pisces full moon and we've talked about different kinds of tools, whether it's gemstones, whether it's essential oils, and please remember to honor your tools and realize that they do come from the earth. Um, whether it's meditation, mantras, prayers, whether it's any types of practices, use the tools that you have at hand. But don't try to push the outcome. Don't try to predetermine what things ought to be, the way outcomes ought to unfold, or the timeline that you need them to unfold on, because really, spirit tends to have different plans. At this time in human evolution, and I would say planetary evolution, it, <laughs> it might sound a little strange for me to be saying don't do anything at all, but sometimes that's everything. Pisces is a very paradoxical energy. In stillness and silence, we find the direction for movement, the kind of movement that is most aligned for us to take in the world. Only when we take that moment of pause, of reflection, and we come back to that space of stillness within ourselves, can we actually engage in the larger currents of the universe in a meaningful and a productive way? So really grounding, centering, calming, no focus, no mission, no direction, just allowing the field to emerge as it needs to. The only real gemstones that come to mind right now are selenite, do not put in water, that's always a good reminder for selenite, and rose quartz. Chunks and chunks and chunks of rose quartz. Just allow yourself to be f surrounded by that field of unconditional love and let that love work through you. At a cellular level, at an etheric level, at an astral level, at all levels that you can think of. And get lots and lots of sleep. Practically, I would say these are 
the most useful things that I can tell you at a general level. Some of you will be feeling pushed. I mean pushed as if you're about to fall off the edge with this particular Pisces full moon. Also because Mars and Neptune are opposed to each other. And uh, that can on the one hand make us want to push our way through a situation with the tools at hand. And Neptune just keeps confusing things for a lot of people. For some this is going to be a time where tools meet presence, meet situation, meet opportunity, meet resolution. And for others it's just going to be an exercise in frustration. So some of you will be enjoying this. Some of you will feel stuck and confused. Some of you will feel like, you know, you don't know if you're coming or you're going or you're up or you're down. You don't know if you're spinning or standing still. Some of you just feel like you want to run away from the world and hide in a cave. And some of you might even want to, you know, go into self-harm. And if you are feeling that way, reach out for people who can and are able and willing to support you. There are organizations that can help. But uh, effectively, this is a wild card. It's a wild card for many reasons, but primarily because it is a Pisces full moon. Anything can happen. This is a time for a deep resolution of karma, and that isn't going to happen because you're pushing it. There is such a thing as divine timing, and this is a case where we are basically asked to be still, to allow, and to remember that our greatest tool, if you want to call it a tool, on the spiritual journey is faith. Not desperation, but faith. There is a difference. I'd say that's probably all I have to say on the Pisces full moon itself. Also note that uh, Mercury and Venus are 29 degrees Virgo and they are wanting to push to into the new sign which is Libra. So there's a lot of unbalanced mental energy that can be going around and it's best to ground it out or channel that energy into something practical. If stillness and opening the field sounds a bit too hard, Sit on the earth, go to some pottery, go to some drawing, go surround yourself with nature and see what happens. That's probably one of the best things that anyone could tell you to do. But uh, yeah, just remember that this energy is going to be with us for a while because towards the end of the month, on the 21st, I believe, yes, the 21st, we're going to be seeing the third and final Jupiter-Neptune square. And that's where we're really going to be seeing the philosophy and the mental ideation that we have surrounding our path matches our actual spiritual experiences. Generally a good time this whole month really for greater psychic protection, for awareness, for trying to get as best sleep as possible. Some of you may be having crazy dreams but that's part of the Pisces roller coaster. But just allow things to unfold. I'm not saying do nothing. I'm saying hold a very conscious space of alignment and allowance of divine energy to flow from that unconditional source of love in the cosmos. That's what I have to say for this particular full moon. Take care. Very many blessings and uh, yeah, lots and lots of love. Cha cha for now. Bye bye.